Okay, what I want to speak about is the changing landscape of executive pay procedure in Israel and my expectation, expectations for the uh, litigations that would uh, follow. And I will read my, for my page to make sure that I will not speak about the litigations that I do not want to mention. Okay, so uh, amendment uh, number 20 to the Israeli corporate code, which is currently in its uh, implementation stage, uh, is... Um, is the Israeli manifestation of a say on pay procedure. There is much uh, criticism uh, about this piece of legislation, but given its uh, uh, unique political economy, I think that the outcome could have been much worse. At the, back of, at the backdrop of the legislation was a proposal to strictly prohibit any executive pay above a certain limit. Such proposal uh, prohibition gain, gained much popularity during a civil uproar against the cost of living in Israel and against the rising inequality of income distribution. The final legislation does not contain uh, any imposed limit. The idea behind the legis legislation is to structure the deliberation process within the company so as to make sure that the outcome is favorable for the shareholders. At the outset, it seems that the new procedures make much sense. Every board must form a compensation committee composed only of outside directors and their decision would be subject not only to the approval of the board, but also to the non-binding vote of the shareholders, and specifically the non-binding vote of the public shareholders. Following a negative vote, the compensation committee and the board can, in most cases, override the disapproval of the shareholders, and together it seems like a modified say on pay procedure. In fact, however, the new legislation imposes a few more restrictions. The compensation committee must decide and disclose pay ceilings, set and disclose ratios between fixed and contingent pay, and commit a certain benchmark and few others in other important factors. Many companies fear today that these additional requirements tie, the, tie their hands and compromise their ability to cut the best deals for the benefit of their shareholders. I expect uh, these new developments to lead uh, to two types of uh, litigation. And I will very briefly say what I think about uh, what's going to happen. So first, there would be cases in which the shareholders would disapprove the proposed pay policy, and the compensation committee would decide to override such disapproval. This would lead to suits arguing that the pay practices are unreasonable and violate the director's duty of care. I believe and expect the courts to strictly apply the business judgment rule to such cases an informed process at the Compensation Committee, aided by objective expert advice, and without unacceptable pressure from insiders, should practically isolate, in my mind, the decision from any liability. Some Israeli firms are already very good in, in complying with such guidelines, and those that do not may suffer in litigation. Second, there would be cases in which plaintiffs would argue that the actual prey practices either deviate from the policy approved by the committee or that the policy deviates from the many requirements in the legislation. I do not think there is a way to evade this wave of litigation altogether, but my estimation is that most of it would fade away in a couple of years. After a while, the courts would set enough guidelines of interpretation, and in turn, the system would stabilize. I think I would stop here and uh, use the rest of the, my time to uh, open the discussion to comments and questions from, uh, from the floor, and maybe I'll say a few more things. Thanks.